Hey guys, Matt Bell here with Electric Violin Shop doing a uh, video today on the topic of bow noise. We get a lot of people that are first time electric violinists who will hit us up and say, gosh, uh, I got this violin, it sounds really good, but there's this thing with bow noise. And what are we talking about? So there's two types of bow noise that we generally hear people talk about. Um, and it's one of the bigger differences between an electric and acoustic. And it has to do with the fact that the body of an electric violin is not what's responsible for getting sound out to the world. It's the pickup. And the acoustic violin, the body itself actually eats that bow noise sound. It's one of the unique things about an acoustic violin body is it's a mechanical amplifier, but it has an EQ to it. So it boosts certain frequencies and it swallows others. And the frequencies that we generally hear in bow noise, uh, well, they're the frequencies that the, your acoustic violin body will eat and your electric violin pickup, uh, it doesn't know that you didn't want that frequency, so it just passes it on. So there's two types, there's both thump and there's both scratch. And when we hear both thump, it's generally this. So you can hear every time I change directions, you get the th 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 No, I'm not gonna do that again. Um, and then there's the both scratch that you can hear this. I was trying to sort of mute that out. It So you can hear like the scratch of the bow on the hair. If you really, really listen to your acoustic, you can hear it doing both of those things. Um, the difference is that the body of your acoustic violin eats that frequency and it doesn't push it out to the world. So the, the thump, the low frequency thing that we hear when we change directions of the bow, it's about 50 or 60 hertz. And it's caused by the bow changing directions on the string. It's just, it's we're now hitting that, um, we're hitting that pickup from a different direction. And the same thing that happens, you're suddenly stopping the vibration of the string and pushing it back the other way. It does it on your acoustic too. Um, so it's pretty easy to get rid of that low thump. And that's by just putting in what's called a high pass filter or a low cut. Uh, it's on an EQ. And, and on a four string violin, you can high pass your violin up to 200 hertz. You're, you're not generating anything useful below like 196 hertz on a four string violin. Five, six, and seven string violins, you need to move that down a little bit, um, but it'll pretty successfully eat that, that thump that you hear when you're changing directions. I actually like that thump in my playing. I'm an electric player, normally with a lot of distortion. I like it because it gives a little uh, accent to the beginning of my note. I don't mind the sound. I actually kind of like it. Um, but if you do want to get rid of that thump, you just EQ it out. Um, like I said, your four string violin isn't really generating anything useful below about 200 hertz anyway. Um, four, five, and six string violins, you just have to adjust that a little bit. I generally will bring my high pass, they're generally sweepable. So I'll engage a high pass filter and I will start running up that frequency until I hear it biting into the tone of the instrument and then just back it off a bit. So that's how you find that. Uh, that scratch is usually like 6K or higher, 6,000 uh, hertz or higher. And it's caused by the bow hair actually scraping across the string. Your acoustic does it too. If you'll really listen for it, you'll hear it under your ear. You'll hear it on the strings. Again, the thing is the body of your violin doesn't amplify that. So people 10 feet away don't hear it but your, um, your electric violin, the pickup, doesn't know that that's an undesirable sound. So it just sends it to the amplifier and the amplifier amplifies it. So it's a little more complicated getting rid of, um, I'm gonna set this violin down. It's a little more complicated getting rid of bow scratch. Um, we can use a little bit of reverb. We'll, we'll eat it a little bit. Um, a really big thing is using a better bow. Um, there are some technique things that we can do. Um, also, 
A preamp is going to help you a lot. A preamp is going to increase the signal to noise ratio and it's going to help make sure that the signal of the violin is nice and strong and it actually overpowers uh, sort of that scratch. Um, you can use a different amplifier. Some amplifiers are going to push that scratch sound a little more than others. Um, you can change your rosin. Uh, that's another thing if you're using a cheap rosin. Uh, it's going to be a little scratchier. You can try to use a darker sounding rosin. And the big thing is uh, you can ignore it. If you're hearing it in your practice room at home and you're like, oh my gosh, like I can hear once I heard this scratch, I can't not hear it. Um, in a mix, when you're playing with a band, nobody's going to hear that. Um, it's, it's in a frequency range that's getting eaten up by cymbals and, uh, and a lot of stuff that's happening with guitars. Nobody's going to hear it. If it bothers you, there are some solutions. Um, and I want to hand this over to a couple of friends of mine. One is Dr. Wallace, um, and he's going to tell you who he is. And here is Doc Wallace's take on bow noise. Hi, I'm Dr. David Wallace, the chair of the string department at Berklee College of Music, as well as an instructor at MyTalentForge.com. And I'm creating this video at the request of Matt Bell of the Electric Violin Shop for a live stream on bow noise. Now off the bat, let me say that I don't mind a little bit of bow noise. I want to sound like an electric violinist, electric violist. I don't want to sound like a keyboard. I don't want to sound like a plectrum instrument. I want people to know that I have hair. So that said, I know that most of you who are complaining are objecting to some low frequency noise that happens on the bow changes around below 60 Hertz or some nasty high frequency hiss and whine that can happen around 1.2 kilohertz and higher. And that can be addressed through equalization. But before you do that in your signal chain, I want to remind you of an important computer programming principle that also applies to electric performance. Garbage in, garbage out. Your sound going into the signal chain needs to be as noise-free and pure as possible, and that will help nip problems in the bud. First, first thing to check is your hair. I've noticed that synthetic hair has a noisier sound signature than horse hair. I've used that indestructible, unbreakable stuff, and it's pretty awesome, but it does have more hiss. So consider that. Another thing to consider is the stick you are using. Every bow acts as equalization in itself. Every bow will boost certain frequencies, cut certain others. So some, boys, some bows are inherently noisier or quieter or have more fundamental. And it's not always easy to tell what's going to work because a bow that's noisy for you might be clean for me and vice versa. And it can even vary from electric to acoustic. So for instance, these are two very good violin bows. I like to use both of these. This is actually my preferred one for playing just mic'd or unplugged. And it has a tremendous amount of projection. However, it also brings out a lot more high end. So if I'm playing on like an electroacoustic or I'm using a pickup, this actually will have more fundamental and be cleaner. Same thing with my viola bows. This one has a lot of mid-range and some hiss, and it's better than a lot of other bows, but when I'm playing electric, I hear much more of that high-end hiss. This is my best viola bow. It's also my best electric bow. Consider also some of the synthetic bows, the fiberglass and carbon fiber bows that have been developed exactly for electric performance. I found that the Coda bow bows bring out a lot of fundamental for me, uh, but again, see what works for you. Try things out. Okay, so those are some things that will help. Another thing is in terms of your processing, uh, be sure that you're not adding too much gain. Oftentimes the bow hair noise means that when we distort, we need less gain. But I don't want to talk about processing just quite yet because again, Garbage in, garbage out when it comes to your bow arm. If your bow arm is tense, if you're pressing the bow, if you're gripping your stick, that's gonna bring in some nasty tone. So 
what I can recommend, I've got a video on my YouTube channel called David Wallace, Wicked Leaks, Joseph Gingold's Five Minute Bow, Zen Bowing Exercise Number Seven. It is a classic relaxation and tone production and bow control exercise from Joseph Gingold, the teacher of Joshua Bell, as well as Sarah Caswell, one of my favorite violinists, and it will help clean you up. Now, it is part of a series on MyTalentForge.com called Zen Bowing Exercises that was developed by myself and Vi the Fiddler Wickham. And if you practice all of those, that will get the garbage out of your bow arm, out of your tone, so that you'll have less garbage going in. Okay. Go get rid of that noise and keep the nice hair noise. So that's my friend, Dr. Wallace, man. If there's, if there's anybody who thinks about teaching in the string world, the electric string world more than him, I don't even want to know about it. It's a guy who lives, breathes, sleeps teaching. And uh, he's an amazing performer as well as a, as a teacher. So uh, he's a guy you should definitely follow if you don't follow him. Another guy you should know is my friend Timothy Huh, is a really, really smart dude. He's a good player. He's a really, really smart dude and uh, thinks about signal chains and electronics and paths and circuits and, and, and electrons. He, he knows stuff about stuff. So here's his chat about bow noise. I like your violin shop. Tim High here. I've been playing electric for about 20 years. Um, tools for dealing with bow noise. Um, start at the strings. I like to use medium gauge strings. Um, heavy gauge strings will make you pull your bow harder and use more pressure on your fingers and all that contributes to noise. So we want to use the lightest gauge strings as possible and that's going to give you the sweetest possible tone with the, less, with the least amount of noise. Um, preamp. Uh, high impedance preamps are definitely going to help you out because they flatten out your response curve and um, it requires less corrective EQ to get the tone you want and um, it also adds a lot of nice gain to your signal. Um, rule of thumb, you want every stage of your uh, chain to be as hot as possible without adding noise before you move on to the next stage. So you want a nice High impedance preamp, I like a 10 meg. I use LR bags preamps, and I've used those for basically the entire time I've played electric. And um, word about that, if you are using wireless, preamp has to be the first thing in your sig uh, signal chain because it electrically alters the frequency response of your pickups. And if the wireless is in between those, then all it turns into is uh, an expensive EQ, and that's not what you want. Um, after the preamp, you want uh, an impulse response a loader. Uh, impulse responses is going to be a three-dimensional photograph of your instrument. Um, it allows you to take the resonance and the richness of a high-quality acoustic instrument and a high-quality microphone, and basically it turns that into an effect that you can plug your electric signal into. Um, electric instruments, all we have is the initial pull of the bow on the strings and we have whatever bow noise comes with that. Acoustic instruments, they have the body resonance, they have the room and all that air and space. So it's really getting EQ and compression and reverb. That's all happening before the sound even hits your ears. Um, acoustic instruments have that naturally, electric instruments don't. But impulse responses let you capture that and add it to your signal. Um, so, really, if I was to pick one pedal that I could use, then it would definitely be an IR pedal. Um, after that, I will put in EQ, uh, cut everything below 60 hertz, cut everything above 10 to 12 kilohertz. Um, that gets rid of your boominess and also all those noisy, hissy frequencies that don't really contribute to your sound. Um, and you definitely want to get that before your compressor because the compressor is going to squash and boost everything in your signal so that the front of house has to do less work to keep you up where you need to be so that you can be heard. Uh, now the last is, essential part is volume control. Uh, you want a volume pedal after your compressor and probably be before any delay or reverb. Um, the reason this is so important allows you to control bow pressure without having to uh, worry about more noise. 
Sometimes we want to play very lightly at high volumes. Uh, sometimes we want to play, pull lots of bow to get a lot of richness, but at low volumes. Um, this is really tone and touch control. Um, when you're playing that light, airy, washy stuff, I want that to sit on top so that you can hear it over the cymbals and the vocals and all that other stuff. Um, when you're pulling lots of bow and going for the rich full sound, um, sometimes you want to bring that down so that it's not stepping on the vocals, which is also very important. Um, uh, the volume pedal, that allows you to have the best of both worlds. You have airy, rich, loud, and quiet. And compression and volume together, uh, volume pedal together means that you can have all of these elements uh, whenever you need them. So those are my essential tools for dealing with bow noise. Uh, it's a big picture approach because we have so many tools and options available to us now. So I hope these tool tips are available. Uh, sorry, I hope these tips are helpful to you. And Matt, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you, Timothy, and uh, super super helpful stuff. If you don't follow him, uh, you should definitely do that. So. Uh, as you can see, there's there's sort of a, a uh, for bow thump, that low frequency sound that we get when we change direction of the bow, that's a fairly simple thing. We can just EQ that out with a high pass filter. With bow scratch, uh, there's sort of a multi-pronged approach for dealing with that. One of the things is uh, it is part of the sound of a violin, so we're going to have to live with some of it. Uh, we can EQ some of it out. A little bit of reverb will hide it. Uh, a preamp is going to help you. Uh, a better bow is going to help you. Better rosin is going to help you. Better technique is going to help you. There's just there's a whole bunch of those types of things. And uh, and I hope that this video gave you uh, a few more tools in your toolbox for dealing with bow scratch. So thank you guys for hanging out, and we will see you next time.